Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, our group will be presenting the topic uh, Women, Leader and Islam, which is uh, fall under the theme of Ethics and Leadership in Islam. So, our group uh, consists of three members. Uh, I am Shazana, Aisha and also Ola. I am Shazana and I'll be presenting the first part of this presentation where here we are going to discuss on how to define leadership in general perspective or Western perspective and also in Islamic perspective. So first of all, scholars uh, have been uh, agreed that there's no specific definition for the terms or words of leadership. So uh, here there are compilations of um, famous um, definition of leadership. So here we can conclude that in general, uh, to define leadership, it is uh, generally a process of influencing people to get or to achieve a common goal and to reach a uh, same destination. Okay, so uh, to continue, here we are going to discuss on how to define leadership in Islamic perspective. So basically, there's no much different in the definition of Islamic perspective and also general perspective. But the only difference is that in Islamic perspective, the Islamic roots of leadership is generally exist in the primary sources of Sharia, where it is based on Quran and Sunnah. And uh, generally, in Islam, uh, leadership is viewed as a godly mission that a Muslim has to accomplish because every Muslim is considered as a leader or the term is Khalifa. So every of, every one of us are bonded to do good and prevent bad, which is Amma Ma'ruf Nahi Munkar. So the Islamic concept of uh, leadership, number one is uh, to do good and prevent bad, leading oneself that is directing oneself to do two good direction. And number two is do not harm do not harm the face of earth where as a caliphah we are sh we should not do harm to the earth because we are selected to to govern the uh, the earth and the, the islamic principle of leadership is number one is trust uh, which is amanah and number two is accountability and uh, the, the next part will be presented by my friends my name is Aisha ibrahim and i will continue into the second part which is moment in leadership the evolution in women of women in leadership. Since 1960, the countries have had a woman in the highest position of executive power. But in years, women have become far more confident about what they have to contribute. Next is the, the differences between men and female in leadership. The first one in genetics, psychological and surgical aspect, according to researchers, can influence the link between hereditary traits and leadership behaviors. By evoting these links, it is possible to determine if variation in the likelihood of emerging as a leader are caused in part by genetic differences between these individuals. Next is cultural difference. Little girls are raised to be obedient and assist their mother throughout the majority of countries, cultures, and continents. While the elder and younger brother calm them to the point of tears on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, men have been groomed from an early age to embrace leadership roles, while women have been raised to be submissive lovers. As a result, people in some cultures are, male, are more inclined to describe women as having delicate strategic traits and males as having manly strategic traits. Next is communication style. In general, women are supposed to use communication to strengthen their social bonds and relationships, whereas men are expected to use language to assert social dominance. Despite the fact that boys and girls are taught the same language, they learn to use it in different ways. As opposed to the indirect, intricate, and emotive feminine style, the male style is more separate, concise, and instrumental. Next is leadership style. A forceful authoritarian style is often associated with a female leader who is determined and powerful, while female leaders are more inclusive and community-oriented than male leaders. Rather than trying to impose norms, they are more likely to lead by consensus. Next one is the thoughts of leadership toward male and female leader. As you can see, the public prefers women to males when it comes to honesty, intelligence, and a few other character attributes they regard in highly in leaders. Next part is importance of women leadership. The first one is role model. Other stereotypes play a role, such as the belief that women prioritize family before profession and that women are less successful leaders than males. Having more women in position of leadership are the only way to confront and overcome these stereotypes and hurdles, given the support and role models women need to develop in their professions. Second one is enhancement of teamwork. As leaders, women are able to make bold and sensible judgment, which helps to make the team environment less territorial and more cooperative, giving the team a family-like feel. This improves teamwork across the organizations and aids in the implementation of new corporate culture. The third one is diminishing the gender pay gap. Men, when men and women begin their careers from the ground up, men are typically given more opportunities that lead to higher paying positions. 
More women in leadership positions, on the other hand, can assist reach a greater goal and narrow the pay gap more effectively. The last part of this chapter is barriers to the women in leadership. The first one is gender biases and stereotyping. Competent female leadership aspirations are hampered by gender biases and stereotyping. Male executive behavior in the workplace is generally interpreted as strong, demanding, and direct, whereas women's forceful behavior is frequently interpreted as aggressive, pushy, and strident by their employees. When a female professional behaves in a way that contradicts gender expectations, she frequently experiences blowback. If work life balance. Maintaining a work life balance is also a significant obstacle for women in position of leadership. Even when both spouses work full time, women still do majority of domestic and child care chores at home. Trying to juggle motherhood and working outside the home may be fairly challenging for professional women. The last one is sexism. Professional women are helped by hidden and over or overt sexism. Thus, if a woman working for the goals are burdened by sexual harassment, inequitable work settings, and subtle kinds of sexism. Professional women are denied the respect and opportunity for growth they deserve due to deeply rooted attitudes and biases against them. Thank you and I will pass next part to Ola. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ola and I will proceed with our third and last part of this presentation, Women's Leadership Between Past and Present. For thousands of years, women, in culture dominated by men, were superior to men. The lineage in most cultures generally follows the male line of the family. No rules or religion say so, but most males and his family prefers that way. However, as proven by Quran, Sunnah, and scholars, Muslim women have been participating in most of life sectors as leaders since early Islam. This could be seen in the story of Um Salama and Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, Aisha radiallahu anha, and Ma'arakat al-Jamal, Balqis, Queen of Saba, Maryam bint Umran, and Asiya, wife of Pharaoh. Among many other women leaders, present world, women in workplace till this day continue to face the battle of equal pay, treatment, and representation. Women has reached their current situation after a long fight. This fight has been recognized in three waves of feminism. Let's get to know them. First, the first wave, or also known as the suffrage. It occurred in the 19th and the early 20th century, focused mainly on the suffrage along with other legal rights. The movement succeeded in gaining women's right to vote and other legal rights. The second wave, which is known to be with equal pay, it began in the US, then spread to the Europe, UC, and Asia, focused mainly on uh, sexuality, reproductive rights, and the wage gap between women and men. The movement has succeeded in securing career opportunities for women and many reproductive rights. Lastly, the third and the most current waves, three, fights for the equality and focusing exclusively on female victims of gender natural issues. It was mostly active in social media such as Tumblr and Facebook, labeling by adopting lib uh, labels and identities. The efforts of these three movements and the single voices of women has helped women to reach their current situation, which is represented by a number by research uh, done recently. It was shown that 90% of the responses have been worked by a team led by a female, while 59% of them are currently working by a team led by women. 70% of the responses were found female manager more effective, and which 49% have said they were highly. 38% of the response would prefer to work with a female boss. 67% had a positive attitude towards women managing the team. 58 of the respondents think that women are better leadership positions. Uh, so to sum up our presentation, we would agree on three main points. Islam does not and has not forbidden women to work or lead, and has highly recommended women education since one day she will become a mother and a role model for her kids. Secondly, women have proven to succeed in the public sphere and demonstrated great leaders throughout history. This could be seen in the case of New Zealand and the Muslims. Thirdly, despite the gender part, Despite the gender pressure and leadership, women are constantly evolving and reaching new milestones across a wide spectrum of human activities in modern times. That's from us and thank you.